What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode seven of the Wealth Journey series. Today, I'm going to give you a full net worth update. I'm talking from the moment I started making money and had a full time job all the way up until now. I realized that I started these episodes kind of with the high net worth already, and I want y'all to see the full picture and story behind it. So we're going to get started right now. We're going to start with the year 2017. I am going to be looking at my phone here and there to talk about these numbers because it was kind of a long time ago. All right, so back in 2017, my net worth was a whopping negative $29,928.36. So humble beginnings, and there is definitely a story behind it. First of all, I did have a rule where I wanted to keep at least $3,000 in cash, $2,000 of which was in my checking, $1,000 was in my savings. And then, of course, the big thing that was weighing on my shoulders at the time was my debt, which was only my student loan. So that was $34,228. Now in 2017, I graduated in May and the gracing period didn't end until December. So for that year, I did not pay off any of my debt because the types of loans that I have didn't gain interest until that gracing period was over. And also the place that I worked at at the time, which was the tire factory, they didn't let me start contributing to my 401k until I was three months in. So I didn't start putting anything towards my 401k until that August. And that's where I started contributing 4% of my income from each paycheck into my 401k. And and I wouldn't realize this until later, but this was actually a Roth 401k. I'll explain why that's important later. But that is how my net worth came out to negative $29,928.36 for the year of 2017. The year of 2017 wasn't anything too crazy, but it was my start. And this is a very big turning point throughout my life. So Prior to that, it was a school, 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 uh, drum line here, drum line there. But like after that was when my life took a very big turning point. In May 2017 is when I graduated from college. I was on top of the world. You couldn't tell me nothing. I wasn't arrogant or anything or overconfident or anything like that, but I was just happy. I was excited for my future. I had just graduated at the top of my major, which was industrial engineering technology, which is not an easy major, by the way. And I was just happy that I got a job because it, at a point it looked like I didn't have anything lined up and I was going to have to move back in and wait until I could get a job lined up, which terrified me to the core. But I ended up getting the job. I was just so excited to get my start. I was completely naive to all the negatives that came with moving out, getting your own place and working full time in an environment that you've never been in before. But eventually... I learned and I got to understand how people are and things like that. I say all that because there's a lot of time when you're first starting out, it feels like it's going to be easier than it really is. And it was not easy. That was like, it was easy up until about June or July and August, it hit the fan pretty bad. But I was able to maintain and get through the year of 2017 with a negative net worth enter year 2018. So by the end of the year 2018, my net worth was $7,561.52. So when it came to cash, this was just my checking and saving, by the way, I didn't have like money into a high yield savings account just yet, hadn't really learned about it yet. But my cash was at $23,000 total. And this is because this was the year where I really obsessed over personal finance because I was like, hold on a minute. I'm making good money, but I'm working a job I hate and I need some kind of exit strategy because I just don't see myself being here for another 10, 15, 20 years. I really didn't see myself there for another one year to be perfectly honest with you. And so I started looking online and I started really just researching and I found Dave Ramsey and a bunch of other people, Robert Kiyosaki and things like that, read a lot of books. And I was like, I, I need to save. I need to have a cushion of some sort. And so I worked a ton of overtime. A lot of it was by choice. I would say the first few months of that year, maybe up until April, it was completely my choice. But then it got about bad towards the end of the year, like that last eight months. It was straight up against my will. It was just like, oh, we need you in here. And I was a manager, so you really can't like say you got to you got to be up in there. And that was how every manager was. You had if you were called in, you had to be up in there. And they would let you know in advance most of the time, but still, it's mentally exhausting to know that you have to work 
on a day that is supposed to be your day off where you might have had some plans and it wasn't your choice to come in. It was the company's choice to have you come in. So that's mentally exhausting for a multitude of reasons. Now, if you add on to that, that you're working in a toxic work environment where people are cussing and screaming and hollering and acting a fool and threatening your job all the time, that doesn't make it any better. So that kind of got me into like, well, look, if something happens, I'm going to make sure I got my three to six months worth of expenses. And of course, on top of that, I was like, this money ain't building up fast enough. Even if I am working overtime, I want to have more money. So I started looking into other things. I started looking into side hustles and investing. It was when I started my side hustle when I was teaching kids how to play the drums because I was in the drum line back when I was in college. So I was like, I know I got the credibility for it. And so, yeah, a few parents did have me teach their kids. And I made a good $200 a month from that. And that was in between work, knowing I had to work pretty much every day. But we made it happen and I actually had fun doing it. Teaching people is something that fulfills me in life. But anyway, I also learned about stuff like investing. So I got the Acorns app. I'm sure you've seen it on ads on YouTube and all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of things advertising Acorns. It's basically a robo investor where you put your money in there and you might not know what to invest in because I didn't know what to invest in at the time. And what it does is it puts your money in a portfolio and it just grows it for you. And so... I made a good 40% off of that within a few months. And I was like, oh man, I really thought, I looked at that and thought I was doing something. So I took that money out and put that into my savings as well. So I had $3,400 invested total. And of course, by this time, my Roth 401k had been growing quite a bit because of the overtime and all the extra money I had been making. So it went up a lot faster than usual. So it ended up being $7,100 by the end of the year. And when it came to student loans, I went heavy on it just for reference. Again, I had been listening to Dave Ramsey and I just wanted to do anything that could build my net worth up quicker. And at the time, I really didn't fully know what net worth was. As embarrassing as that is to say, I'm man enough to say it. I, I didn't know really what net worth was, but I just knew that I wanted my money to go in the right direction. So I knew if I was in debt, obviously that was taking money out of my pocket. So I wanted to pay it down as soon as possible. So as I've alluded to in multiple other videos, I threw hundreds and hundreds of dollars per month toward my debt. So I ended up paying $5,244.88 toward my debt. So the debt I had left after that was $25,983.48. And so, and that was how my net worth ended up being $7,561.52 by the end of 2018. So that's actually a really big jump from negative $29,928. And so as you can see, it really, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take you being perfect right from the start, but it takes a certain mindset and a certain type of consistency. And even though I was going through what I was at work and I went through a lot, but even when I was going through that, I didn't allow that to defeat me. There were plenty of times where I thought about quitting and just not having anything else lined up, but... For one, I talked to my mom and she was like, you don't need to be doing that. But also I had to really think about the long-term goal myself as well. So when I would go back home rethinking my life, when I would hate the fact that I had to deal with a bunch of different events. I mean, there were times where the power went out at the plant and that can cause a fire in the specific department I was in. And I had to go back in there when everybody was about safe outside. I had to go back in there, make sure no fires were happening and risk my life and stuff like that. When there were flash floods and hurricanes and floods and water coming inside of the building. There was a lot of natural disaster stuff that I had to deal with at the time. And that built character. And I actually didn't mind doing that. I felt like that was my duty to do. But when you add on the fact that I wasn't treated correctly, I wasn't paid correctly for all the crap I had to deal with, the people were disrespectful, the management was disrespectful. And it got me thinking, why am I doing all of this for a company that really doesn't act like they give a crap about me? And so you might see some of these videos and, and feel like it was easy or these are just numbers on the screen. But no, these numbers have stories behind them. And it took resilience. And I mean a high level of resilience and fortitude to keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and get tougher and stronger and smarter and learn the system and learn everything I could. All while never missing a day of work 
and acting like I wanted to be there every single day. Nobody had any idea because one thing I did develop over the years was a good poker face. So you never know what somebody's start looked like is what I'm getting at. Anyway, 2019. My net worth actually went down that year. So by the end of 2019, I had $5,631.89. But there's another thing to this story. For one, I moved across the country at the beginning of the year. So all that money that I had saved up that $23,000, I was making an exit plan that whole time. And this is a big topic that I talk about within my book. I won't spoil the whole thing for you, but I will say this. Towards the end of 2018, I had been saving and saving and saving. And one of my friends, one of my close friends, his name is Pat. But anyway, he was living out here where I'm at now in Nevada. And he was like, hey, there's this company they're new and they're recruiting a lot of people. But the thing is they really need experience out here and your experience to them would be invaluable. You need to apply right now. I was like, where do I sign up? So of course I did the application process and all that stuff. Next thing I knew I got the job and um, I was coming all the way out here, 36 hours away from where I'm originally from, which is North Carolina. So I learned a few things in that time. One, you don't ever let any job make you feel like you can't go anywhere else because that is devaluing what you're worth. And you need to always know your worth at all times. I don't care how young you are. I was I was 23. So I don't care how young you are or how someone's in your face saying, come on, where else are you going to go and make this kind of money? I wasn't held down by nothing. I had just gone through a breakup a few years prior. So she definitely wasn't keeping me over there. My family and friends were already in different cities in North Carolina. So as much as I hated leaving them to come all the way out here, I was like, what about my happiness? I was like, and what is stopping me from coming all the way out here, making more money than I was making over there and having a better work-life balance? And even though there's a risk that I can move 36 hours away and be in the same exact situation, I was like, that's a risk I'm willing to take because at least I tried. At least I had the intestinal fortitude to do something that many people aren't willing to do just at a chance to have a better life. So that's what I did best decision I've ever made and I will probably be saying that for a long time. So the cash that I had at the time was $11,500 and I'm talking about the end of the year 2019 by the way as, as far as the numbers that I'm reporting. So for my 401k for the job that I work at now we'll call it 401k number two. It had $6,000 in it because I had only been contributing for about 10 months. But my Roth 401k from my previous job had $12,731.89. And the debt that I had left was $24,600. And that year I didn't go as hard on my debt simply because I started thinking, I was like, okay, if I just save and invest, mainly invest, I could see my money grow a lot quicker than if I pay my debt down in a rush. It's not like I'm going to get a medal or anything. Let me let me take a step back. And so that was what I did. And by the way, guys, just so y'all know, to get all these numbers, I had to go through several different documents and sheets just to get the exact amount of number because I wanted to have accurate information for y'all. That's why I have my net worth tracker now because you can track that thing for 10 years and it's free. So you might as well go ahead and download it because now I wish I would have been tracking my net worth dollar for dollar for the last few years, like since 2017, because if I did, I would be able to paint the picture a lot better for you. Anyway, I wasn't as aggressive when it came to paying off my debt. I paid $2,738 toward my debt and that was what left it to be $24,600. My total net worth was $5,631.89 by the end of 2019. 2020 was the start of the end of the world. Still a good year money-wise, and my net worth did go up quite a bit. My net worth ended up being $14,270. So at this time, I had $3,000 in my regular bank account, and then I had $9,000 in my emergency fund. And a lot of this money was inside of an app called Wealthfront, which was giving me, I think at the time it was like 2.21% of a return because I knew I wanted to save, but I also wanted to earn some money on what I was actually putting in. I know my bank account was giving me like 0.01% or something like that. I was like, that ain't gonna work. I need at least 1%. So I put my money into Wealthfront, which now they give 5%. 
but yes. So all together in cash, I had about $12,000. My Weeble account, this was when I first started investing on my own, like outside of retirement accounts. So this was, of course, before any Roth IRA, before all that good stuff. But my Weeble account had $371.53 by the end of 2020. My new 401k had $12,100 in it, so it grew quite a bit. And then my Roth 401k, which is my old 401k, had $14,798.74. So that's pretty wild. So 2020 was another turning point because that was when I first started getting paid from YouTube. I had spent a lot of money on YouTube courses and coaches and all kinds of things in 2020. But I ended up meeting this one coach. Her name is Camille Colazzo. She has a YouTube channel herself and she helped me blow up my channel just by making a few simple yet very useful and adjustment and i've never forgotten that and now i just continue to strive to grow this channel further and grow my business further but i also got quarantined in the year 2020 because a few of my co-workers had covid and because i was in close contact with them which i don't think i was everybody got quarantined so i was sitting at the house for two weeks like rethinking my entire life and so that was when i got to thinking about frugal living and thinking like, man, I should be a lot better with my money. I shouldn't have spent my money on this. I shouldn't have bought those shoes. I shouldn't have went out to eat on this particular night. Just, you know, things like that. But the main muscle that got built, so to speak, that year was investing because I know the stock market was crashing, but that got my attention because I was like, wait a minute, everybody's taking money out of their 401ks and, and talking about take all your money, put it in your bank account and everybody's scared. And I always remember that Warren Buffett quote, you should be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. <laughs> and so I was like, this must be what he's talking about right here. Let's see what's up with this investing stuff. And so that was when I opened that Weeble account and started putting some money in there. But I thought I, it felt really cool and freeing to just buy stocks and just watch them grow slowly but surely. And that translated very well into the year of 2021 because that was when my net worth jumped up to a $48,142.41. Um, I didn't really do too, too much with my cash on that particular year just because I really wanted to go heavy into investing. So when I say cash, I'm talking about checking, savings, or emergency fund, but I put a lot of that cash into investments that I did have. And so here's what it looked like for that year. I had $1,500 in cash between my checking and savings account, but don't worry, I didn't completely neglect it because that was when I started my Marcus by Goldman Sachs account, and I had $3,988.73 in there by the end of that year, and that, of course, was growing at a steady rate, but I started contributing to a Roth IRA with M1 Finance, which if you're interested in that, I also have a link in the description for that. I have a link for all these things in the description if you want access to them, and you will get a perk for going through my link, but anyway... My Roth IRA had $2,323.78. My Weeble account at this point went to $13,558.80. 2021 was the bounce back year of the stock market. So that didn't just go up. My new 401k, which was $34,136.47, that one went up. And my old 401k, my Roth 401k, went up to $17,234.63. So I was about happy. And that was how my net worth got up to $48,142.41. Also, I did forget to mention in that particular year, I did get promoted at my job and it was quite a big jump up as far as salary went. So I went from like $80,000 to six figures. So I was very, very happy about that. Other than that, nothing huge really happened in the year of 2021. I was just really enjoying life and enjoying being out here where I'm at now. And just thinking like, man, when my last job had to deal with COVID and all this crazy 2020 stuff, a lot of them were just out, out of a job for several months at a time. The company I work at now, they were like, we're going to make sure y'all stay getting paid. Even if we shut down for a couple of weeks, y'all all, all going to get paid. So it was about good. Of course, I was reflecting on this in 2021. In 2020, everything was happening. So I really wasn't thinking too much about back home as far as where I worked at. I was just making sure that I was about good over here. But in 2021, after some time had passed, I really started thinking about it. I was like, man, they really didn't look out for them over there. I'm glad I did leave when I did. 
besides the point. Anyway, 2022 is when things got serious and my life started to change a little bit. So for starters, I did get a net worth boost of just a little bit, but uh, the stock market did crash again in 2022. And I lost a lot of money trying to invest in crypto and NFTs and all kinds of stuff. Like I, I am not ashamed to tell you, I spent $2,000 on ethereum and i transferred it to nfts and it did not work out in my favor let me tell you that but that's okay you have to be willing to risk something if you're going to invest i don't recommend crypto or nfts to anybody watching my channel this is just something that i decided to do with some of the extra money that i had and um, it just didn't work out so i learned a lesson of what i won't be doing in the future i'm more of a stocks guy i'm going to stick to stocks right now plus it's standing the test of time and all that good stuff. But anyway, 2022 ended the year with $50,514.99 being my net worth, but but a few things did drop. So for starters, I didn't keep nearly as much money in cash as I normally would. It was like $1,250 that I kept in cash. And of course, I did not neglect my emergency fund, which was Marcus by Goldman Sachs. So I kept $4,468.89 in there. That was by the end of that year. My Weeble account was $12,564.01. Um, and then my new 401k went up to $41,109. And my old 401k dropped to $14,212.24. And my Roth IRA dropped to $1,760.56. Not an ideal year for the stock market, but it was good to see that some of my accounts grew while others went down. So they were counterbalancing each other, which is a really nice thing to have. So you can't win them all. But it was good to still have those accounts. But the, the reason that year was so heavy for me is because everything was going so well. Like at the beginning of the year, I met my current girlfriend. Everything was going just fine with work. Big bonuses happened that year. A lot of great things happened that year. But right right in April, something crazy happened. That was when I lost my aunt. I had to rush back home and go to the funeral. It was crazy. Lost her to breast cancer and everything. She fought a good fight. She actually went into remission for a little while. But then it came back. And when it came back, it was very violent. So that was a very tough year for me like I disappeared from all social media for a while I disappeared from work for a while I told them I'm not going to be back for a while I, I exhausted so much time off it was ridiculous I was gone for like maybe a month and a half I just needed time to think and all that good stuff so so that's a lot of the depth when it comes to personal finance like you don't really know or you're not always able to anticipate the things that are going to happen but you got to make sure your finances are still in order. You still got to make sure that you're mentally in a good place because if you're not, life doesn't care about the things that happen in your life because it happens to everybody. Everybody loses family members. Everybody goes through something. Everybody goes through a breakup. Everybody goes through some sort of frustration with their job. Like you name it, people are going to go for it and people aren't going to tend to feel sorry for you. So you have to make sure you're on top of your finances. I say all that because even though I wasn't perfect this whole time with my finances and I'm still not perfect, the whole point that I'm making is you got to be ready for when things like that happen. Because if I wasn't, I might not have had the money to just spend on a plane and like get going that day. You get what I'm saying? Like I was very calculated in how I did things and I was able to take the time I needed to really cope with the death of that family member because she because she was one of the closest people that I've ever had in my life. And I didn't know how I was gonna take it. I had no idea until it happened. And for the record, all of this stuff came out of nowhere. And that's what happens in life sometimes. Sometimes things hit you out of absolutely nowhere. And the thing was, I didn't just leave my job hanging. I gave them a warning. I was like, hey, I'm not gonna be here for a while. This is all my PTO. They said, take all the time you need. I said, bet, here's all my PTO. Here's all my comp days. I, I was throwing all kinds of time at them because I needed it. I, I don't take any time off of work, really, unless I'm going on vacation. But that right there, obviously, was an exception. So I say that because some some people miss work and jeopardize their jobs and their, and their money makers just because of the simple fact that they're going through something or they woke up and their stomach hurts or they woke up and they got into an argument with their girlfriend or their boyfriend. It's like, come on now, we're adults here. Y'all got to grow up. So I, I learned those types of lessons from an early age when I was at my last job at the tire factory. And I'll tell y'all what, 
no matter how much I hated that place with every bone in my body and with my entire being, I was still there every single day. You're showing up to work to get money at the end of the day, so act like it. In 2023, now we're getting closer to present day. I actually showed y'all in my first wealth journey video what my net worth was by the end of 2023, but I'll just repeat it real quick. It ended up being $95,530. So very respectable amount. And it's crazy how sometimes my net worth just jumps and jumps and jumps. You're about to see why. Because again, really wasn't prioritizing cash too, too much. Like I was building my cash for sure. And I always kept the 3000 in between my checking and savings at the very minimum. That, that's always been a rule of mine throughout this entire time, even before I realized it. But my Marcus by Goldman Sachs account had $5,162. So I just continued to build it up, even though it ended up being like just a thousand more from each year. You got to realize there was a lot more at one point that I just took out and some of which I put in an investment, some of which I bought a course with or something that I felt would increase my value. And nine times out of 10, it did. So yeah, you might look at my Marcus account and be like, well, you don't really got all that much money in there. Look at my investments, though. You got to think about how much money I pulled from there and put in investments. And you could say that's risky, but I chose very secure, smart investments. And I did a lot of research and you're, you're going to see that the investments paid off. So anyway, we'll start with the Roth 401k that ended up being $17,066.78. My new 401k ended up being $66,374.11. My Weeble account went up to $21,479.47. And this was after I was throwing so much money in it during the year of 2022. So I kind of just let it breathe and let it grow. My Roth IRA ended up being $4,646. $6.48 and the debt that I had left ended up being $24,407. And if I forgot to mention my debt in the other years, literally during 2020, when they said that you don't have to pay your, your debt anymore, your student loans anymore, because it won't gain interest, that was when I stopped. So you could pretty much imagine that my debt stayed exactly the same. So I'm mentioning it now because this is when I started paying it back in 2023. So my net worth ended up being $95,000. $530. And I really like how much your net worth can grow. So like even if in one particular category, your savings isn't growing like you want it to, maybe your 401k is, maybe your Roth IRA is, maybe your individual investments are. Personal finances doesn't just exist inside of your checking and savings account. You get what I'm saying? It doesn't just exist in your emergency fund. You have to have multiple ways multiple living spaces for your money. And sometimes your entire net worth might drop, but that's going to happen. Just don't let it go too far in the wrong direction. So I say that because right now where I said I have a net worth of $131,888, and that's a big jump from $95,530. So throughout the years, yes, my salary did increase. Um, there is a thing where if you leave a company that is clearly not having, that has no intentions on promoting you or giving you a raise. If you leave that company, go to another one that values you and that is doing well economically, that industry is doing well, chances are you're going to get raises every single year. And I'm not talking about 2%, 4%. I'm talking like it could be 8%, 9%, 11%, 15%. 15 you never really know what might happen. And of course, the thing that I did as my salary grew I didn't just keep buying more stuff like, yeah, I bought some things here and there. Yeah, I went out to eat here and there. Um, I enjoyed my life for sure, but I didn't put myself in a position where I was stuck with bills that I didn't need. For example, I've been driving the same car I've been driving since I was 20 years old. My Hyundai Accent 2013. Ain't nothing wrong with it. So the way I see it, I stayed within my means. I made some mistakes here and there, which you hear about through a lot of my videos and even some of my current videos. But for the most part, I stay on track. And that's why I said in the beginning of the video, it really doesn't take much, but you do have to focus and you do have to have a certain type of mindset. So these videos right here, it's not just me saying, yeah, so this is how much I made and this is how much I spent and this is how much my net worth is. And it was easy. No, it wasn't nothing easy about it. There's, and it's not easy for anyone. It might look easy on the internet when people flex and make it seem like they're just in their bed making money, making tens of thousands of dollars, not doing nothing. But 
there's always more to the story than you think there is. And for me, I work a full-time job and I run this YouTube channel and I run my own business. So like I'm trying to balance a lot in life, not to mention physical fitness, working out and doing Muay Thai and running and all this fun stuff that I do on my off time. Yeah, it's not easy. It's definitely going to be hard, but you can 100% do it. You just have to choose. Choose your version of what hard looks like because if you choose the type of difficulty where it's hard because you can't make ends meet and you can't pay your bills, that's hard. Or you can put in a lot of work up front and you can deal with a lot of crap up front to build yourself to be stronger and smarter and then get to a point a couple years later to where you don't have to tolerate any of that crap. That's hard too but it leads to an easier and better life for you. Not just you though, for your whole family. So yeah, just think about it that way. This was a little bit of a longer video than I expected it to be, but I wanted to share my story behind each year of my net worth building so you could understand this is a full net worth update and this is what the full picture looked like before I got to the 100,000 because I think in my first net worth update video, I was at like 95 or $98,000 of net worth. And some of y'all are probably wondering like, well, wait a minute, how'd you get here? So this is how I got here. This is the story from going zero to $100,000 in net worth. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. I will see you in the next video.